Yeah, that's me entering a Formula 1 paddock, and today I'm going to give you a bit of an insight into the secrets of the Formula 1 world. Hello everybody and welcome to the Dutch Grand Prix, and today I'm going to give you a little tour of the paddock here. Okay, before we do that, let me give you a rundown of what actually happened here. So I was lucky enough to get to three races last year. They were Spielberg, Austria, Spa, Belgium, and Zandvoort in the Netherlands. And for about a day, I was able to get into the paddock and have a bit of a look around and see how the Formula One world actually works. I was able to get close up and personal with all the drivers. I got photos with loads of them and even spoke to Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo for a bit. I took as much footage as I possibly could. So I'm going to talk you through how it all works. This is going to be so exciting. I started off my Thursday morning on media day with a track walk. I walked along the pits and then straight onto the track. I must also say thanks to my buddy Eduardo. He'd been to a few of these paddocks before. So thank you to him for showing me the ropes. So we started off by walking up the very, very steep run up to turn one along the pit lane exit. We also saw Lando was doing his track walk at the same time, but he was on a bike, so he was much quicker than us. And then they went about their business doing all sorts of things, whether it be preparing for practice or qualifying. So I got to look around the garage and things and see all that. I was able to catch drivers who were running about in the paddock. You see them all the time. Sometimes they really do sprint, but then also I was lucky enough to get into the media pen somehow. Um, and I was able to take some photos and videos of them answering questions. At one point, everyone was getting cleared out except for me, and I was just like, um, am I meant to be here? I just had my long lens on my camera. They must have thought I was professional, which I guess is a compliment. And again, yeah, I just got to go around the garage, look around the pit lane. So I'll go over to live in Spa to introduce you to the pit lane. All right, hello everyone. We're now in the pit lane of the F1 paddock here at Spa. And uh, as going by here, we see there is a uh, some sort of old F1 car. Um, seems to be, uh, I have to have to look what's going on up, but there you go. Um, pretty awesome here. We're going to go up and down the, uh, the pit lane here and I can show you a few garages. So the one thing you'll realise about the pit lane is there's always pit stop practices going on. All the time teams are practicing for those sub two second pit stops. And of course we've got Red Bull mechanics working hard and we've got Mercedes mechanics and they're all working very, very hard to rebuild the car because every single time they arrive at a new track, they got to completely rebuild the car. So that's what they'll be doing. Now let's have a look at hospitality and some of the things I saw there. So first I tried out the McLaren simulator. Let me show you what I got up to. Here we are in McLaren hospitality. We're now gonna try out their simulator, which seems to be a little bit broken right now, but that's fine. Let's give it a try. All right, well, I'm now driving and uh, <laughs> and recording at the same time, so that's great. We're playing one-handed now. This wheel is a little bit, a little bit weird. How I turn it very little, uh, I turn it a very little amount, and the entire steering wheel turns in the game, which is not what I want. But oh uh, well, here we go up Eau Rouge and Radion. But yeah, this is sick. And then next, I actually saw Daniel Ricciardo practicing some hoop skills. He was going to shoot that basketball in that tiny little hoop. But then I found out this secret about the entire paddock. Now, the fun fact about all of these hospitalities is they're actually trucks. If you can see, they're modules going from up here to over there, the bottom. It's made up of seven huge trucks that go around all of Europe. You just see there the guy going in. That's Tom Stallard, Dan Ricciardo's race engineer. It's all made up of little modules, which is pretty sick. So you see over there, there is Max Verstappen um, having a little meeting with this uh, dad and someone else. And then I also tried to be on TV as much as possible, whether it be on Ted's notebook on Sky or the main coverage of the pit lane. So some keen-eyed viewers did actually see me and thanks for tweeting at me if you did see me. Then also on Sunday after the race, I was lucky enough to sit down with Lando and we had a little conversation. We spoke about photography because he said, oh, do you like photos and stuff? And I was talking to him about that. We spoke a little bit about Rocket League. I know, isn't that cool? We about how we play Rocket League and things like that. I was having a general chit chat about photography, which I thought was really interesting. I know a lot of people usually think that Lando can maybe be a bit shy. I definitely saw that, but he was very, very chatty. He was open to talk to me and we sort of got to know each other a little bit. You also might've been able to see that I was in a Chris MD video. And if you watch him, my back is in there while him and Lando are having a conversation, which was pretty cool. Okay, so now it's time for the main event. I'm gonna give you a quick whistle stop tour of Zanfort Paddock and see how many drivers you recognize in this video. Hello everybody and welcome to the Dutch Grand Prix and today I'm going to give you a little tour of the paddock here. Behind me here is one of the biggest ever, it's actually the Mercedes one and it's huge. And then if we move around here, we have to see we have Williams. This is also a really nice paddock, um, uh, hospitality despite everything that they've been going through. And I know they've got a new investment which is sick and you might be able to see Jamie Chadwick is also there which could mean something about the future of F1. Maybe we should come in, you know, make a video about it. But yeah, isn't this a sick little place. It's uh, amazing actually. I, I really want to go in there. We've even got a bar at the top there. 
If you go up there, pan up, you see the bar up there, which is awesome. And then moving over here to the DHL one. DHL have that owner, I don't know why. Um, they do move everything. They don't actually unpack everything. Um, all the teams build their own hospitality suites. But yeah, it's pretty small. It's literally just one truck. That's literally all it is. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Alfa Romeo. Now you might be able to see this is actually uh, really nice. You can also see Valtteri Bottas in there, probably a meeting with his marketing team and engineers, with everything going on. Um, and then we move over to the last, but the biggest hospitality of them all, because this is technically two hospitalities in one. It's Alpha Tauri and Red Bull Racing. And we might actually see Lance Stroll if we run, who is on a scooter, who is going by. I'm not sure if the cameraman will be able to get that. Um, there he is, going by. A lot of the drivers in here in Zanfort use scooters and things to get around. As I said, the paddocks are spread out. We have the garages in one and the hospitalities in other. So see here, there's a golf cart which is being used. Anyway, back to Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. So as I said here, each team has their own media. So I can stand here and answer interview questions. If I could be here and be like, yo, what's up, interview, yeah. This is what, three stories tall, maybe two stories? Absolutely massive. And there we have a Stefano Domenicali, the, uh, the head of Formula One, he just went down. But yeah, it's absolutely huge. Um, and over here we have three Stroop waffles. If you don't know, it's kind of like a wafer waffle. It's not, it's not it's maybe a wafer um, sandwiched uh, with some caramel in the middle. And they have these being freshly made all the time here. For anyone in the paddock to go up and, and grab one. Maybe I'll go grab one right now. Here you go, you can try one. Thank you very much. And here we go. Three Stroop waffles from the Dutch Grand Prix. See a nice little, I'm gonna show you, it's sort of a caramelly in the middle. Just take a nice little bite, bite out of it. Mm, very good. But yeah, that's pretty much this paddock. I'm gonna go and enjoy this Stroop waffle. Well, uh, you guys will see me back in my bedroom. Thank you for that past Connor. I also realised in this that Kim Ilman, the F1 photographer who also makes YouTube videos, kept looking at me during this, which is quite funny. But I saw him loads during this weekend. He was always about taking photos, for example, here in the media pen. But let me talk you through Drive to Survive. Obviously, that's a pivotal point in Formula One at the moment, attracting a lot of new fans. So here we have a Drive to Survive cameraman. You'll see them everywhere. And then they have this really long boom arm, which they hang over the drivers, as seen here. I also did a track walk again in Zanfor, as it was much shorter than Spa, because I didn't do Spa. But again, TV doesn't do the banking justice. Everything is so steep. I also saw Charles Leclerc on my track walk, which was quite cool. Cool. We had a little dance routine with this motorbike guy and everything, it was really sick. But yeah, that's about it for the Formula 1 paddock. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing and thank you for watching.